what you're interested in is uh, electronics which follow changes in the system, which you can probably, no, I'm not going to give you the notes, which we have got up to it again, won't you? Okay. And um, there is a set of notes, but I think they're a bit um, too sketchy, not necessarily what you want. And what I will try and do, but it certainly won't be till half term, is to write you out another set. Okay. So, what we've got is analog electronics which follow continual changing systems. Now, what we're really, really interested in is using, using devices which amplify and follow those changing systems. So, you have an input signal and you feed it through these, out, uh, these analog electronics and you get an output system, the signal. Now the signal can be in terms of volts, can be in terms of current, can be in terms of even power. And this of course, if you're feeding in a certain amount of power and you're getting out more power, means you must be taking power from the system. So into here you've got to feed power to account for the increase in the system's uh, increase between the output and the input. Now, you have that the S output is A times the S of the input. And A is an amplification or a gain. What's that? S is the output and S is the input, the signal, sorry. Right. Okay. So, what we've got is a gain, <laughs> and in fact this one we call the open loop gain. And the reason for that name is going to emerge as we go on. Now, with a linear amplifier, so with a linear amplifier, you are taking these notes down, I hope. With a linear amplifier, actually I think it would be an idea to make a short notes on what I'm doing, and then I'll let you have a fuller set, because I want you to note down the circuits and so on as we're going through it. A linear amplifier, AO, the open loop gain, is constant. Now, one of the simple things which produces gain in a system is a transistor. Now, technically, the transistor as an amplifier is in the GCSE course. But fortunately, they've got a second question on it. <laughs> because it's out on its own, because most of the work is digital, well, all of the other work in the GCSE course is digital work. And stuck on the end of this is the um, transistor as an amplifier. Now, what it consists of, the transistor, is. A semiconductor device with three terminals, the emitter, the base, and the collector. And the symbol is something like that. I won't bother to take this bit down, okay? Now, you can either have the arrow coming in, which indicates that electrons are flowing in, or it can have the arrow pointing out, which actually means that positrons are flowing. Oh no, positive holes are flowing in. But don't worry about that. <laughs> Doesn't that show the direction of the current rather than the electrons? So. It's direction of current, yeah. actually, yes. Now, <laughs> watch the clock. <laughs> Let me tell the story. <laughs> Just settle down and listen. What you've got is this side, probably Earth, or has some potential. And then you've got another potential applied to the collector. And all these diagrams actually have power lines at the top and the bottom. And normally these power lines are omitted from the diagram. We take it as red down there. In the transistor work, they tend to be put into the diagram. But in the amplifier work we are going to talk about, they tend to be omitted because everyone knows they're going to be there and how they're connected up. 
And in fact, the connections are omitted to the amplifier because it's a standard way of connecting, so there's no point in cluttering up the diagrams by putting the connections in. You'll see what we mean later on. Now, supposing you have a signal being fed in. Now, depending on the polarity, relative polarity of these, this signal can be siphoned off through the emitter. So the majority of the current can be taken down through here, and relatively little will be taken through the collector. It depends on the polarity of these two, and in fact, better still, the polarity of those two. Now, if you actually change the polarity here, then you can encourage the current to flow through there. So, effectively, by altering the polarity across your transistor, you can control whether the current comes from the base to the emitter or goes through the collector. Another argument, and perhaps a more realistic argument in view of the construction, is that you have the current coming in through the emitter and then you siphon it off into the base or through the collector by their relative polarity. It's a case of controlling the current flow by the voltages. Now, supposing you organise it so that the current flows through here, how can you actually organise amplification? Well, the easiest way is simply to put a resistance in there. Now, if you change the current through that resistance, for example, supposing you've got a current of 1 milliamp flowing up through there. Now, if you have a resistance of 1,000 ohms, a kilo ohm, there, then the potential drop across there is going to be one volt. Now, if you actually change the current flow and move it to two milliamps, the potential difference across there is two volts. So you've got a way of changing the potential of that point. Supposing this is nine volts, then on occasions this will be eight, on other occasions it will be seven. It depends on how you fix the current flow, flow through the device. Now, if you organise a small change in voltage here, and you organise it with the resistance and the characteristics of this, the way this thing performs, that you change the current flowing through there, from, we'll say, from 1 milliamp to 1.1 milliamp, then the voltage changes from 1 to 1.1 volts. So whatever the signal coming in here, you've got this change from 1 to 1.1 coming out of there. Now, by taking care of the characteristics and altering this resistance to a suitable value, you can ensure that that change is much bigger than this change. In fact, by a factor of perhaps 10 or so. So where your small signal coming in is increased to a larger change going on the output side, you're going to get effectively more power. You're going to get amplification within the system. And this means you're ending up with perhaps something of that form tied onto the transistor. Now, this is the sort of thing that went on, went on, in, um, well, until fairly recently, transistor star radios, and this sort of thing it still goes on, in fact. But this system has actually been condensed down, and we now tend to use chips which contain operational amplifiers. And these have two inputs and one output, and that's it. You also got to put in power supplies. And they, in fact, on the diagram, normally go into there and there. 
and these are linked with, well, they in fact link with a positive supply and a negative supply. And there's an earth point somewhere in there. So, I mean, you can think of an old man as two of these combining together. And you've got the two transistors which give you amplification coming in through these inputs. And they're locked together, in fact, to give you one output. Now, all I've done is give you some idea of the basis behind what goes on in a, an op amp. And we're not really interested in how it happens and what goes on in it. What we're interested in is what are the properties, the external effects, what happens when you investigate what goes on when you feed in signals to the input and you observe what goes comes out of the output. We're not interested in what's inside. We're not interested in its structure or anything. All you're interested in is the phenomenon. What happens? And then, what happens when you change the circuitry? Now, you may find that this is rather unusual because the physics so far has been why does it happen? Okay, why does heat transfer? Why does current flow? Etc. Not interested. This happens when you do this, and that's the end of it. So it's a complete sort of difference to what you've been doing before. You've got to remember the detail of what happened, not why. Right, must be this, upstairs. Oh, I better have these papers back, please.